content is king. If you're a content creator, and I mean, let's face it, most of us are, you know that the number of cinematic shots and smooth B-roll doesn't mean anything unless you've got a strong message that you're trying to tell. It's very easy to get lost in the best camera equipment and the coolest effects and to the perfect studio space to work in. Some of those things you can work towards, there's some that involve luck, but most involve both. There is one thing, however, that I've learned you can immediately work on that will help you create the best content as fast as possible. And that's editing at the speed of thought. I'm a messy person, and working against that friction is absolutely crucial. If you look around my room, you wouldn't think I was very neat at all. I mean, I tend to toss clothing aside, leave my sheets askew. There's camera equipment on the floor sometimes. But it's easy to just leave my bedding as is when I wake up in the morning. When I finish doing laundry, it's easy to toss the clean clothes onto my bed and and move them to my couch and then back and then back to my bed and then my couch again. This happens even when I'm looking for something to eat. It's just easy to toss something together without thinking about the nutritional value. Hmm. What if I shifted that to long-term thinking? If I make my bed in the morning, I don't have to reorganize my sheets every time I get into bed. If I were to fold my laundry immediately upon completion, it would be organized and I wouldn't have to search for the right clothing every time I need to find a new outfit and start my day. If I were to meal prep, I wouldn't have to debate with myself over healthy food options. Something yummy and nutritious would be right there in front of me. Mm. Both of these options for these few scenarios work, but the dump of time gets put on different ends of the spectrum. By engaging in long-term thinking, I'm eliminating the time that it takes to make decisions in the moment rather than backloading that time. So what does all of this have to do with editing? Actually, a lot. The earlier you spend the time organizing, the better payoff you have in the end. When I first started editing, I would just dump everything into my project similar to what I did with my clean laundry. If I filmed a video, it would go on my desktop and then it would be put haphazardly into my NLE software, and then maybe eventually I would find that clip and put it in the timeline. I was much more interested with the finished project than the process of getting to that finished project. And probably the lesson that has stuck with me the most that I learned in college is that you need to stay organized so that the editing can go much smoother. The more diligent you are with your organization, the easier the process is going to be for you. It's not gonna be seamless, but there will be fewer bumps and bruises along the way. In my editing class at my senior year at Emerson College, my teacher named Ryan Moody taught us to edit at the speed of thought. Meaning that when you're editing, when you're spending these time making decisions, that time should be as small as possible. It's an interesting concept to wrap your head around because first you need to have the framework of organizing footage. I organize my footage in the order that I shot it, and I mark that down on my shot list where the shots live. Then I import that footage into the project and make sure it is as organized in the project as it is on the computer. I'll also import the motion graphics, stills, music, voiceover, etc. Everything has a folder, everything has a home. When you're editing, if you need to find the upbeat song that you've downloaded, you can go to your audio folder, your music, and upbeat music, and it should be right there. This will save you time because instead of listening to a bunch of clips, you've got it all planned out and you can get on to the next decision. And this goes beyond just editing a project. If you have a script, it helps to break that script down by section. Take the sections that can be filmed together and batch them. If you go off script, make note of it somewhere so you don't have to rely on your memory to put it back there. If you want to go crazy, color coding has been helpful too because it allows you to visualize what type of media that you need. And this is just the start of organization and thoughtful editing. If you'd like me to go deeper on a topic like this one, let me know one tip that stood out to you in the comments below. It's important to remember that these are tools that can work for you, but they don't always work. And just like there are exceptions to the rule, there are exceptions to the tool. For example, a hammer is most times the best case scenario for hammering in a nail. But 
There might be a rock or a heavy crate right next to you that can get the job done quicker. For me, I know that sometimes I'll abandon an organization when getting something done is more important to me than the quality of the project. If I'm working on something silly or something that needs to be done in an insane amount of time, I'll usually sacrifice organization first. But even then, I could theoretically do a better job when I have that stuff organized. It's just a good habit to get into so that I'm used to doing so when it matters. My suggestion is to start with what works and then experiment. Draw within the lines, but don't feel confined to the instructions. It doesn't have to just be video editing. Try this out with other parts of your life, like making your bed, folding laundry, or meal prepping. A little bit of preparation up front can save hours when you need to make a decision. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you loved it, give me a thumbs up and tell me so in the comments below. If you hated it, I mean, try out that thumbs down button and then let me know what I can do better also in the comments below. My name is Ben Hillman and this has been some Slacker Stuff. Thank you